morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we are back in Belize. That's right, it feels good to be back home in the warm. Good morning to you, Drew. How it are you? certainly does. New York was a little chilly, I believe. It was a little bit chilly. Um, summer is here for them now, but it's still not good enough for me when it's raining and then it's cold and windy. And anything less than 65 for me is cold. It's like not cool, but cold. True. Good to be back on the island. We are in San Pedro in Belize and Behind us, you can see the entrance for the new, what do you call that? The water San taxi. Pedro Water Taxi Terminal. It seems they haven't been doing any construction for quite a while, but there's still no boats or people showing up. The it's genius got like, the better of them. It's kind of like build it and they will come? No, the genius got the better of them. Yeah. The genius definitely got the better of them. I'll build it and then I'll check to see if the boats can fit and if well, it's adequate. You really? Know, that's that's what I heard. But they, I am not they, here. I don't I don't beat too much. They built it and now before the boats can come in, they need to test and see if the water is deep enough that they can get in. That's what I heard. Otherwise, I don't know why they aren't using it. Hi. Who knows? Maybe a, somebody has the answer. There's a little genius in all of us and sometimes it works and then sometimes it doesn't. Who knows? Who knows? All right. But good morning to Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados. Grenada. Grenada. There's a saint in there. St. Vincent so and all the other saints out there. All the islands, including Belize, that look at um, or I should say all the countries, including Belize, that look at Morning Matters. Thank you for making Morning Matters a part of your morning. If you don't know yet, I will tell you now that we have a YouTube channel. It's called Morning Matters Belize. I ask you to go check it out. I also ask you to like the page on Facebook called Morning Matters. There you go. If you don't happen to catch it on TV, you can watch it on YouTube. You can share it with your friends all over the world. Perfect. All right, any matters of your own? I know it's bright and early. You, know, you must you have some matter of your all own. all the time. Right now, it's getting a little bright. I need to put sunglasses on, I think. Okay. If you don't mind. I bought these in St. Thomas about 30 years 10 ago. 10 years ago. <laughs> Great lenses, though. So what's your matter? I, I don't have a matter. I just wish this water terminal was open. Okay, well, I think um, summer is upon us. It's coming, it's coming slowly but surely. I think, not that it's a matter, but it's a thought that just went through my head, that I think more people should make time to take their children around their country. If not out of the country, around their country. If you are in Trinidad, take your children around Trinidad so that they can see Trinidad for what it is. So that when somebody asks them something about Trinidad, they are able to say, you know what, I've been there, I've done that. Um, I think same here in Belize, a lot of people don't bring their children out to the islands. They don't take them down to PG, they don't take them to see the Mayan sites. They don't take them out of their normal environment enough. And summer is here, you have time on your hands. It's not that expensive. Planned it, take them, so that they can say, you know what, I did something this summer. Very good idea. You know, lots of places, especially here in Belize, they have specials for family. They have local specials during the summer months. So call them up, find out what the special is, you know, and if you don't have children, then take yourself. Yeah. But I think it's good to take our children around. That lady almost fell, turned around to look at us. Is nosy, she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. We All would right. have had to turn the camera if she fell. I know you would have turned the camera and filmed her before you tried to pick her up. What a thing. All right, time for some matters. Perfect. Me and my boyfriend has been together for three years. I can't voice my opinion. He is facey, very jealous. He hits me at times. I am talking to any male. I lose a lot of my friends because of him. I try to talk to him to change. Now he is putting up money for our wedding. As a voice... It says, as voice my opinion, I get box or something like I am supposed to abide by his rules. Well, he Girl, and a wedding. You certainly better not be going through with the wedding. He and a wedding money man gone through the door. I mean, I'm not saying that he wouldn't box you, but that would be the last time he box you. Exactly. And you think it's bad now, it'll get worse after the wedding. Yeah. Um, if he's abusing you in this way, you need to make a plan to get out of this. And it's only three years. It's not like you are 60 years old and you've lived in an abusive relationship for 40 years and now you feel trapped. Three years is a very short time. You need to start building your own self-esteem. Ways in which you can build your self-esteem is to surround yourself with people that speak positive to you and about you. Um, 
a lot of times when you're, why your self-esteem deteriorates is because you stay in that same circle. You're only and as you so believe what you're being told. Yes. You know, and you give him all the power. And the power doesn't have to be physical power. The power is mental power. And so you need to stop valuing him as much as you do. Because if you didn't value him so much, you would have left him. You need to start valuing yourself and respecting yourself. Going to your friends, people that are truly your friends and say, look, girl, I would want to leave support for trying to figure out how to get out of this or whatever it is. But you need to start talking and stop, stop being silent. Why these abusive situations live on is because it is quiet. You don't tell anybody because you are ashamed. You have nothing to be ashamed of. You are not the one doing the abuse. You are the one taking the abuse. I can't see anybody in their right mind saying, oh, you deserve it, Drew. The woman should have beat up you more. No, if you are being beaten upon and you tell anybody, they will have compassion for you. Okay. And they will try and take you out. That's true. If you want to be out, that is. You know, and if you're not going to get out, you might as well just plan on being locked up in the house and the only one you have to talk to is him when he feels like it. If that's the kind of life you want, knock yourself out. You know, and it's like... um. If you don't stand up for yourself, nobody will. Ain't that the truth? I was watching, you know, Facebook is where I get a lot of my news, right? So News or gossip? It's news, man. It says news feed on the top, doesn't it? It doesn't say gossip feed. It says and news feed. And everything on the internet's true. And everything on the internet is Especially true. Especially Facebook. Especially Facebook. Anyway, I was on Facebook and I noticed that this guy, who's on my friends list, had like big cuts on his arms, like serious cuts on his arms, so much so that he had to get stitched for them. According to the news feed on Facebook, his woman did it to him. And he says, I think one of his posts was, oh, I still love you, Mary Jane, whatever her name is. Wow. Okay, then a few days later, I notice he says, should I forgive her? Dude, you can forgive her, but you must also forget her. Forgiving somebody for something that they do to you does not necessarily mean you have to be with them. Or subject yourself to the punishment again. All right. And I use this example as so that other people out there can see what is going on in this world. I mean... Today they will cut your arm, tomorrow they will cut your throat. You can't allow any form of abuse. And abuse doesn't start, in my opinion, and in my experience, abuse doesn't start physical. It doesn't start one day I walk in the house and box you. It starts by first, they start talking to you how they want. And I use the word how they want, because of how we say it in a Creole. And then it goes from there and it escalates, escalates, and escalates. Before you know it, one day you say nothing and you still get boxed. Yeah, just because he's in a bad mood, or she's in a bad mood. Thank you. Because abuse is not only man abusive, you know. Women are also abusive. And man, if you are out there and your woman is boxing you up and beating you up, stop taking it. That doesn't make you a man to take it. Yeah, you don't have to take it. They say what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Just whatever you do, don't leave any marks. You know, I just thought we were having a good morning, Matters, and then you come off with this. We are. It's beautiful. The pigeons right here next to you. Abuse is not only physical and the ones that are emotional and mental leave bigger scars than a cut on your arm or a slap over your eye. That's true. All right. So no abuse. Don't pay Drew no mind. My boyfriend and I been okay. I think these people are coming to catch the boat. <laughs> My boy. Rude awakening. <laughs> My boyfriend has a bad attitude and whenever I tell him I am going to leave him, he gets a sweetheart. Leave him! Oh, jeez. If your only reason for not leaving him is you're afraid he's going to get a sweetheart, I, that's no reason. If he's going to get somebody that quick, he's really not got much emotional attachment to you at all. This comes from the same person that is talking about the boyfriend that's beating up. The next time you oh, say you're going gosh. to leave him and he says he's going to get a sweetheart, let him go. Help him pack. Yes. You know? Tell him that's fine, you're going to get a boyfriend. No, tell him you'll get freedom and you won't get any more licks. And that is more valuable than any boyfriend or girlfriend in this world. Freedom is priceless, you know. I couldn't agree more. Good morning. I don't have an issue, but I just want to big you all up for what you do. You help a lot of people. Big up, Have a Rhonda. great day. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You are too funny. Big up, Rhonda. This one says... I am with this guy that he says he loves me and he will marry me and we will marry sometimes to come. But he have mixed personality, meaning he keeps 
away from sometimes don't answer my calls and texts. Then when he is good mood, he wants all my attention. What am I to do? I don't know. Maybe he's manic depressive. And he doesn't want you to see that side of him. Who knows? Well, Maybe he's got a girl on the side. But you have, I, the only way to know is ask him. You had to hire a private investigator to follow him around. I mean, it could, I always say everything has two sides to a story. And if your issue with him is that he doesn't answer your calls and texts to time, could it be that you're calling and texting too much, too much or at inconvenient times? Meaning he might have a job, he might be asleep, he might be a security guard and he can't be on the phone in the day because he needs to sleep because he goes to work in the night so that is the first thing you have to ask yourself am i being fair in in the way that i am treating him or the way that i am judging him and if you think you are being fair then speak to him about it babe why are you this way at times because you say when he has time he's all yours but when he don't have time he don't have time yeah He's out earning a living, perhaps. Yeah, maybe you have all day home and he have all day at work. You know, and I find out that, that that's true. If somebody doesn't have a job and they have all day, but think of reasons to call and want to talk to you, I, that's not good. They need to have something to keep them occupied. You know, I was listening to something this morning and the guy made a good point, even though it was in a joke, that phone calls are not supposed to be elaborate and long. They're supposed to, phone calls are designed to get a message across and go about your business. You not sit on the phone well, all day and and true. and I want you no it's just and too I much. Have the same way with text messaging. You don't carry on a conversation Hello. in text. Hello. You pass on a message or two and you, you know, know. I'll meet you at this time. You don't put on a whole conversation and have to explain in three paragraphs in a text. Sometimes you have to drew. No, you don't. Sometimes you must email. Speaking of which, before we end today, I know we're going to read another matter, but what do you think causes gray hair? Besides genetics? I, I think it's wisdom. Well, I must be turning into a genius. Well, you got a long way to go, but... Uh, I have like a million gray hair in my head. I've been noticing them. My How goodness. many do you think I have? You, that's the color of your hair. You never had black hair. <laughs> but gosh, I, and I think the more I scratch my head, the more they grow. <laughs> Anyway. I've heard some of it's diet, some of it's just age. It just <laughs> happens. I am not that old, Drew. Oh, morning. At what age did your mother go gray? She's always been gray from I know her. Okay. From I was a child. Well, and how old would that make her? She's in her 20s. Okay. So you're sprouting late. She was wise beyond her years. <laughs> Morning, I've been with this man for 12 years, but we both seem to be growing apart. Now we are not together for almost two years, but it hurts me that our two babies miss us as a family. That's a tough situation, but at the same time, I, you know, if you two weren't getting along and, and fighting and, you know, I personally, I think it's better for the kids to see you as you truly are and who you really are mm -hmm. apart as opposed to seeing two people fight with each other day in and day out and and not being at their best and not really being who they are that's who they are when they're with an adversary exactly i think you need to explain to the children that it's not their fault they can go and see daddy anytime and they can see you anytime but together you guys are just you know it's not gonna happen it's not happening that doesn't take much away from them if both of you can re uh behave responsible where it comes to them there you go now that i know my phone is not broken i can read another matter what uh, you just throwing it behind you there it fell what? i am human it, it fell jumped out of your, it, it jumped out it of my hand just fall you let go of it it jumped out of my hand it has a mind of its own i have a special well, that phone. i believe but it doesn't have legs of its own but the mind is so powerful that it caused it to jump out of my hand I'm with this guy for five it months. It tried to commit suicide, you're saying? It tried to commit suicide. I saved it. I cushioned its blow and now it's still alive. Yes. <laughs> I'm with this guy for five months, but he treats me good. But sometimes lie. When it's time for us to meet, he already have his family. 
What do you think I should do? Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was he married then? That is what I'm beginning to think, that he has not, maybe not married, but he has a woman. Um, well, you know he lied, because if he has to lie to his wife to be able to make time to see you, and especially, and, and, and he has to lie, lie to you, you to make time, time for his, his wife. wife. So you know he lied. What do you want from a married man or a man with his family? Yeah, the relationship's based on a lie, so what do you expect? Find I somebody that's not attached. Find somebody for you. Yes. And that should be good enough for you. I mean, you expect him to lie to his wife and not you. You know his trait is a liar. He had, once you're a cheat, you're a liar. Yeah. They go hand in hand. And if it happens again, you have nobody to blame but you. You already know who he is and how he is. Leave the man alone and that will give you a sense of freedom and a sense of peace. When you get yourself in these relationships, the only thing you do is stifle your own growth. You know, you, you, you keep yourself back from your truest future, from your truest potential. I mean, we were not brought here in this world to be second. We were brought here to be the best that we can be by God's grace. And you have to do that. You can't sit in your house and say, well, you know, he, he treat me good, he give me a whole $300 a week, you know. And he sees me at least one time for the week. When you can have, you might not have $300 a week, but you might be able to get a job and make $250 a week and do anything you want and feel free and find yourself your own husband that can see you every day. There you go. On that note, we're going to take a break and we will be back. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. Imagine, a place where you wake up to the sound of birds, enjoy delicious meals, spectacular tropical sunsets, and starry nights. Imagine no more. Log Cabin is just that place. Our 45-acre hillside location is a mass of orange trees, palms, and local flora. Facility consists of spacious cottages, an open-air dining room and bar, gift shop, deck, and swimming pool. We are known for our rustic yet comfortable accommodations and personalized hosting. We arrange tours to all the popular destinations. Visit us online at logcabins-belize.com or at mile 68 Western Highway. Log Cabin Cabin also offers special group rates. Log Cabins, come experience the best of Belize while staying with us. Is there a possibility of two or more men being the father of your child and you want a free paternity test to prove which one is? If so, email us today at morningmatters at gmail.com with your story. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. Looking for quick and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. Great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy. Grace Baking Powder. So convenient, easy to store, you love it. It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace. Bringing good taste to life. I had a nightmare. No bank would give us a loan because we have no boring history. No, we can't start our own business. 
or build our own home. It's only a dream. Haven't you heard of DFC? DFC can help. Give them a call today. Are we still in a dream? No. You're in a DFC commercial. So come in today to Belize's leading development finance institution and let one of us from the DFC help you build your future. There's too many people in our bedroom. Development Finance Corporation, realizing Belizean dreams. From the company who brought you Buendia freeze-dried coffee, Grace, 100% pure Colombian coffee is made in Colombia. Consider among the finest coffee regions around the world. Naturally freeze-dried, Gries 100% pure Colombian coffee is exposed to less heat than other coffee brands to preserve the flavor and aroma to make the perfectly convenient cup of coffee you deserve. Have a buenos dias with Grace. Recipes go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Good morning. Welcome back to Morning Matters. We are here once again this fine uh, overcast morning. It's a beautiful morning though. Which is probably good because if the sun was out we probably wouldn't be sitting out here. Yep. Once in a while it's good. A bit windy but it's it okay. We have a fresh new soccer field over here next to us. We certainly do. Sand soccer field. <gasps> however. Guess who's in town? But they have lights. Who? Leonardo. In San Pedro? He will be in a few days, so maybe we can get it on Morning Matters. There you go. All right. For the, one the last time you saw him? New York? A few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> but he's here. That's right. So we'll try and get him before he leaves to get on. For the ones that um, are constant on Morning Matters, you will remember him uh, from the Times Square interview we had. Yes, Nardo is in the house. That's Look right. him up. We'll give you his phone number as soon as we get it. Or maybe you ought to ask first and then we'll give it out. I don't think that he'd be happy with that. You know he's a he private is tall, man. tall, handsome, single. Good sense of humor. <laughs> Good morning. I'm a teenager and I always listen to you every morning. A boy likes me and I like him too. But people keep telling me that he has a lot of girlfriends. He keeps on telling me that it's a lie and he really likes me. What am I to do? Well, a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's too young to really get that involved anyway, especially if you're in school. I mean, you can hang out, go to the soda shop, I don't know, go to the movie, whatever. But, and I think at that age, I don't think you want to tie yourself down with one person. You know, you need to get to know people, learn what you... One problem I think people jumping into a relationship too soon, they don't know themselves well enough to know what their likes and dislikes are. They tend to have their best foot forward for as long as they can and tolerate because they want the other person to like them. And then before you know it, you're, you've got this mask up all the time because you want to be who this person wants you to be. And that's not good. So the more you get around and talk to people and, and hang out with different boys, different girls, and create new experiences, the more you learn about yourself and what you can tolerate and what you can't, what you like, what you don't like, which will make for a better relationship down the road. I think as a teenager, your primary focus has to be you. It can't be a boy or a girl too early, kind of like what Drew says, because it takes away from you building yourself. And especially if people are saying, oh, he's this kind of boy, he's that kind of boy. Like in, I always say, if they're not so, they're nearly so. 
And you don't want to get into that kind of relationship so early. A relationship when you are in your teens or early 20s should be blissful. It should be beautiful. It should be, it should be equal. Yeah. Both of you should have same interests. You should, that way you can grow together. Um, something that a girl said a few shows ago, that I, and I keep repeating it because I think a lot of young people don't think about it, is when you choose somebody to date, you have to think about long term. Is this the person I would want to spend 30 years with or 50 years with? And if that is not the case, then don't waste your time. No, it might not be as well as it might be, but you have to start building something. You know, other than that, why? Why bother? Especially yeah, if it is I serious. Agree. I agree with that. I, you don't have to. When you're young, you, 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 I mean, sometimes you date somebody just because they're fun and, and it's a good time. You're learning, you're experiencing different things that you otherwise wouldn't because you don't hang around that crowd or you don't go to that scene. And I think it's good to date several people not just it look, is good you know is this a guy I want to marry no but for now it's fun it's an experience and you don't always have to be dating thinking that you're gonna get married I think in my that's okay for you to think that and I can respect your the gypsy in your mentality I, I have to say that I love it to some degree but for a young woman that's out that's there... That's what I mean. When they're, they're young, they don't even know themselves. That's they, why... They shouldn't be looking long term. They shouldn't be looking for two days or three days or a month or six weeks either because when a lot of people now, when they think of dating, they think of sex. You should not be having well, random sex with these people. Going out with anybody and drinking a few drinks and eating some food and going to the movies and going to Timbuktu, that is great. That you can do that with anybody at any time as often as you want. But when you think of getting into a relationship where you think of intimacy and that for me would have to be long term because you don't want to be sleeping with Tom Jones today and next month you say, mm, that didn't work out, gotta go sleep with James now. No, dating does not have to be sex, granted. But right. when you are in a committed relationship, when you think of a committed relationship, you should think to get into a committed relationship with somebody that has some future in it. That is all that I'm saying. I'm not saying don't go out and associate and spend time and explore. No, 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 no. I'm not saying stay locked up in your house. But I'm saying do not commit yourself or get serious with anybody that doesn't have no future. Well, I mean, I, at that age, I don't think you should get serious, but... Things seem opinion. to be serious at this point in time. That's my opinion. No, you shouldn't get serious. I agree with and you. I, I, I wasn't aware at that age either. But the older I got, the more I realized I didn't know myself, to let alone, you know, try to learn about somebody else. Do you know now? I'm still learning. <laughs> Will you ever know? I think we're always evolving and changing and... and uh, educating ourselves. Do you think you're in any so better of a position like, now than you were like when you were 20? That continues to huh? grow. And do you think you're in, in any better position now than when you were 20 mentally? Oh, absolutely. Really? I wish I knew then what I know now. Mm. Okay. Okie dokie. I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Morning, I'm in a relationship with this guy because of our jobs being in different districts. We only see each other once a month. The other day, my phone spoiled, so he sent me one of his. I found out a lot of texts from other women. <laughs> I told him about it. He got mad instead of apologizing. You know, it kind of depends on how old the texts were, but... I assume you call him out because he wasn't supposed to be seeing anyone. You know what? I'd send him back the phone and call it off. You seeing a man once a month? No, 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 no. Y you know why I would send it back? Why? Because he's a fool. He's going to send you a phone and not delete everything first. Hey, hey. That, uh, that has happened that's, to me too, okay? That's it has happened to me with somebody I know, okay? And they did send me a phone with a lot of the text messages in it. So I guess that person and that man, they're equal fools, don't you think? <laughs> Probably. I did send back the phone though, along with some other messages. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. What I would do for him is I would send back his phone and I would call it off. Um, 
especially if the messages were very recent, meaning like a few days before he gave it to you or a week before, or better than that, when you are, when you were in a relationship. If you think you are supposed, when you made that commitment and the messages came after that commitment was made, I would say, no dude, you need some time to be on your own and, and behave as a single man. So go live your life as a single man, simply because you don't have time to monitor this man and police this man. And it, that is what it will take for him to become in line. Let him go and like Drew says, something wrong with him. But I'm sure Drew knows some people like that. It never happened to you, Drew. I hang around respectable people. I'm asking if it's ever happened to you. You already asked me that, Rhonda. Answer me, the man. I said no. So you lied to me. <laughs> What's a way? Good morning. I'm 35 years old woman. I have been single for a long time. Now I feel like I just don't know how to or where to meet good men. I am tired of being alone. What am I to do? You know, I can understand that. But well. it's better to be alone and happy than have somebody and be fighting all the time. Well, she's not happy. Crying. She's not happy being I alone. Would, I, I mean, you know, obviously you don't want to hang around bars, but you, you, you got to get out, go to church. Do you have any book reading clubs or... Uh, well, I say get out and socialize a little bit club, more. Join the Lions Club, the Rotary or um, volunteer. Get, get, get involved in some organizations and, and expand your circle to where, where you'll run into other people. Well, before you do any of that, you have yeah, to clearly... Put an ad on Facebook. No, you have to clearly define what you want first. Because a lot of times when you are tired of being alone, you grab anything that come. Because this boy come, he looks decent, he dressed nice, he smell good, you know. So you grab him. Before you decide that you want to go out and look, figure out exactly what you want and what your standards are. And then when you go out, you will go out equipped. I mean, I am not a big fan of internet dating, but I'll tell you one thing that online dating does for you that, and it helps to some degree, even though, but you must not trust a whole lot of people. It entertains you. So in the meantime, you are going to be, hey, wait, listen to me. As a single person, sometimes all you need is the entertainment. All right. I believe just earlier you spoke if, if there wasn't any long term. In no, no. She's not committed to there. the people on the Internet. She's just talking. She's single and available and is willing to explore. And if they're not in her neighborhood, you can go on the Internet. Don't get fooled by these brothers now. But trust me, there are, if there's one good one, there's a hundred bad one. Those Africans are sneaky, aren't they? Boy, I tell you. <laughs> but they're not. They're you ever not. been fooled by one? No. Huh? No, I've not Tell been, the truth. I've not been fooled Tell by Tell the him. truth, Rhonda. No, I haven't. Have I? No. They've made attempts, but I haven't yeah. been. <laughs> what are you talking about? But I say that is a good option. In the meantime, you go out, you socialize, but get yourself entertained. You're lacking entertainment. Make sure your entertainment is safe and respectable. <laughs> have I ever been fooled by any of them? I have not been fooled by them. My game tight. <laughs> <laughs> you can be quite gullible. I can be. But the people that have fooled me have not been Africans. They've been my own. Really? All right. Aye, aye, aye. Isn't it easier to read without sunglasses on? This one says, good morning. Good morning. My advice to couples is to live honest, and if you're single, stay single. <laughs> uh, oh. That's a good point. I, you know, the older you get, single isn't so bad. It, uh, you know, you can do what you want. You don't have somebody telling you what you should be doing all day. I mean, I got friends that are married, and they, you know, they can go out when they get permission, and when they get their chores done. It's like they have a boss. You know, not everybody's a gypsy, Drew. Some people like the togetherness. Well, I, and, I mean, and some, some people of like them, the stability of having a wife or a husband. Some of them, I think, like that because okay. they can't think to do anything on their own. All right. They need somebody to tell them what to do. Why, while some people have the ability to think, and they don't think I'm not productive. 
They just waste their thoughts. They just waste it away. So which is worse? Too. I say single is an option. Married is also an option. Do whatever works for you, but don't feel desperate to stick to either. Whatever choice you make, make it because you want, not out of desperation. I had this man, he said that he loves me, but he like go out and drink with his friends and he always put them first. And then he told me, cause of his job, he says he needs some time. What should I do? I say you give him all the time he wants. Let him go. Tell him that's fine. There's this boy around the corner I've been wanting to chat with. <laughs> you know, you don't have time for that. That's a good spot for that phone lady. Ain't, got Ain't no nobody got time, time for, for that. that. Yes. Why, why waste your time with that nonsense? He's looking to get out. He's looking for a nice way to put you down. And he has. Take it and leave it. Far too often, their people are giving you out of the hell that you are in and you are too busy trying to hold on to it. I have a baby from my boyfriend and he does not show any love to our baby. What does that mean? Maybe he doesn't know how. It's probably his first baby. Maybe, I wouldn't say that he... I, I mean, babies don't come with a manual. But I don't necessarily know that he doesn't show any love. Maybe he doesn't show love the way you expect him to show love. Maybe the way how you expect him to hold him and, and cuddle him and, yeah. and feed him and all of that. Maybe he, does, he, maybe he never had that. Maybe he never grew up in a home like that. He doesn't know how to hold a baby. He's still learning. So what you need to do is work with him. And if you... Show him. Say, here, feed the baby. Let me show you how. Yes. Or hold the baby or help me with this or help me with Burp that. Birth the baby. That way Change he... Change his clothes. Yes. Give him a bath. He will and show him how. And he will I, I mean, go I'm close. sure a lot of it is he doesn't want to break it. Yes. It's a delicate thing. So work with him. It's not, I don't, I can't believe that he doesn't like the baby. I think he doesn't know how to be close to the baby. And especially if he grew up in one of those manly man's environment where that is the woman's job and he's the man, where they think that that is cool, then it's going to be even more difficult. But like Drew said, he made a good point. Show him how. And don't tell him. Just suggest, baby, you mind helping me with the baby? Don't say, oh, it's your turn this evening to hold the baby. Right, right. No. Suggest to him, do you mind helping me with the baby? Do you say mind burping I, the yeah, baby? I need to go clean the bedroom. Can you feed the baby while I do that? Ask him. Here, I'll show you. There you go. It's simple. I have my boyfriend. I have two kids, but for the past three years, he have another girl. And I love him, but I don't know what to do. And this girl started to text me, and we're together for nine years. What am I to do? I have a boyfriend. I have two children for him. OK, you have a boyfriend with two children. You've been together for nine years. But for three years out of the nine years, he's had another woman. You don't know what to do. The question I have for you is, can you live with this for the rest of your life? The next question I have for you is, do you think this man will change? And if the answer to both of those is no, then you need to figure out what you will do for yourself to put yourself in a better place. And it's not overnight. It's not going to be immediate. It's not going to be overnight. But you have to start by changing the way you think of things. And that's true, Rhonda. Personally, I think he is not going to change until you change your response to it and draw that line and say no more. Yeah, you need, and you, you're not giving him an ultimatum, you know. When you, when, you get, when you get to the place where you realize that you have to be, you have to make change for yourself, you sit him down and you say, Tom Jones, this is the first time we're gonna have a conversation that has nothing to do with you. This has to do with me and those two children. And what I want for me and those two children, you are welcome to be a part of it if you, feel, if you can meet these requirements. If you can't, I will have to do something different for me. And that does not, that says nothing about what he wants to do. That gives him the opportunity to say, yes, I want to be on this team, or no, I don't want to be on this team. You know, I'm, I'm almost surprised there's not more women shooting their husbands. husbands. Because I'll tell you why there is no... We grew up in a society... You can only sleep with one eye open for so long. We grew up in a society where we were designed to take. Where men were deemed as superior beings. Well, that goes without saying. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. You know, and that is a mentality that has to be changed. We are 
equal beings, meaning we respect, we get respect. We work, we get paid. We live in this house, we govern ourselves by these rules. I am not saying that as a man, certain things are not required from you differently as a woman. No, I am not saying that. But I'm saying when you are in a relationship, you, he is not the one to tell you how your life will be, nor are you the one to tell him how his life will be. We are here as two separate entities trying to make things work together. He is not above you because he is man. You are not beneath him because you are woman. You have equal rights. And until you as a human being can understand that and, and live up to that is only when you are going to see yourself saying, no, I'm not taking it from him. Or no, I'm not taking it from her. You know, we've seen our parents, and I say this for, I'd say 90% of Caribbean people. You see the man go out and do anything he want. He stay out till morning, he drink as much rum as he want, he bring all the bedrooms, them home, the woman have to get up, cook, clean, everything for him. And that is normal. You see the woman? Wow. It is the truth. We have to stop that. We have to say, you know, a lot of women say, well, you know, I can't do this because Tom Jones will get vexed, you know, even though Tom Jones is not home and he's not going to be home till four o'clock in the morning. She still can't go out with her friends. You have to live in a place where there is respect and equality and without respect and equality, no relationship will live. Any relationship, man and woman, woman and woman, man and man, teacher and children, parents, and everybody has to have respect for each other. That's true. Right? And first you have to have self-respect. And when you have self-respect, you govern yourself in a way that people will, they can't advantage you. All right? So when or you at least they won't be around long. Yes. So it's a tough situation. It's a tough situation when you are in a home where a man is doing this to you and doing that to you. It's a tough situation when you're in a home and a woman is doing this to you and doing that to you. Because there's some women out there that are unbearable. I'm not on either side. I am just saying that. Men and women, they both have problems. But if you are the one on the end that is taking and suffering, you need to wake up one day and say, you know what? No, this no work anymore. This is what I will do to make my life better. And it might be being quiet for the next year while you stack all your chips together, get yourself some education, get yourself a job, but you know you are working to get out. You can't just wake up after nine years and jump out. Right. But you have to actively work on a plan and to get you out. And you've allowed this to go on for three years. And you need to stop allowing it. So until you put your foot down, why would he change? Yeah, stop tech. All right? And going out and doing the same thing to your partners is definitely no justification. It doesn't help anything. A lot Very of women true. out there, I hear them the other day saying, well, you know, he can do it, I can do it too. Guess what? So you have two prostitutes living in one house? There you go. Does that make any sense to you? On that note, we're going to take a break and be back. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. Imagine, a place where you wake up to the sound of birds, enjoy delicious meals, spectacular tropical sunsets, and starry nights. Imagine no more. Log Cabin is just that place. Our 45-acre hillside location is a mass of orange trees, palms, and local flora. Facility consists of spacious cottages, an open-air dining room and bar, gift shop, deck, and swimming pool. We are known for our rustic yet comfortable accommodations and personalized hosting. We arrange tours to all the popular destinations. Visit us online at logcabins-belize.com or at mile 68 Western Highway. Log Cabin also offers special group rates. Log Cabins, come experience the best of Belize while staying with us. Is there a possibility of two or more men being the father of your child and you want a free paternity test to prove which one is? If so, 
Email us today at morningmatters at gmail.com with your story. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. for quick and easy baking? Try Grace Baking Powder. It comes in a convenient 10 gram packet. Grace Baking Powder. Great for my pancakes, waffles, fry jack, flour tortillas, muffins, waffles. Wow! How quick and easy. Grace Baking Powder. So convenient, easy to store, you love it. It's good enough and fresh whenever you need it. Another fine product brought to you by Grace. For recipes, go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace. Bringing good taste to life. I had a nightmare. No bank would give us a loan because we have no boring history. No, we can't start our own business or build our own home. It's only a dream. Haven't you heard of DFC? DFC can help. Give them a call today. Are we still in a dream? No. You're in a DFC commercial. So come in today to Belize's leading development finance institution and let one of us from the DFC help you build your future. There's too many people in our bedroom. Development Finance Corporation, realizing Belizean dreams. From the company who brought you Buendia freeze-dried coffee, Grace, 100% pure Colombian coffee is made in Colombia. Consider among the finest coffee regions around the world. Naturally freeze-dried, Gries 100% pure Colombian coffee is exposed to less heat than other coffee brands to preserve the flavor and aroma to make the perfectly convenient cup of coffee you deserve. Have a buenos dias with Grace. Recipes go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Morning Matters. You know, even though it's overcast, Drew, it's a little warm still. It is warm. It is it warm. It is. All right, let's jump right back into some matters. I think we've been away so long that a lot of the matters have been piling up. <sighs> All right, so if I don't read the matters today, I'll read them tomorrow, but I'll read them. I'll try and get as many of them out as possible. Good, good, good. You know, I have a suggestion, and maybe some other viewers might have an opinion. In the States, they have these uh, 1-900 numbers that you call, it's like a dollar a minute or two dollars a minute. Okay. Maybe you should have one of those numbers up so people can call in and talk to you personally. Obviously, you can't take up your half your day talking to people unless you're getting paid, so maybe, that, maybe that'd be I'll worthwhile. talk to the producer and see what they say. Okay. I don't know if BTL has or Smart has anything like that. I check with BTL. They offer the power of voice. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that like to speak to you. I was in love with this guy. She, w oh no, 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 sorry. I was in love with this girl and she broke up with me. What could I tell her to come back to me? You can't. Why would you want her back? She gone. She's not in love with you the way you are in love with her. You live and, and learn. And you don't want somebody around you that doesn't feel the same way. You don't want to sell yourself like you have to convince them that I am the better choice. If they can't see that it's their loss. Yes. You know, as good a salesperson as you are, you don't want to have to sell yourself. 
Yeah, I don't know how you ended it, but about the only, you can't force yourself on her. You can just, sometimes you quit pesting her and stay away. You know, the dust settles and all of a sudden she starts to miss you and she might give you a call. Who knows? But the worst thing you can do is keep asking and harassing and, you know, every other day calling her up. Hey, I love you. I want you back. Leave her alone. That's not going to do any good. And if she does try and come back, I would treat her with a long spoon first. I would say for a while, once every two weeks, you could call just to see how she's doing. And, for what? And say, okay, I'll see. So you can continue. Who loves her, man? She not love him. She doesn't know it, but she does. She doesn't love you. She doesn't know it. You are just like the boy that sent the message. Let me tell you two something about you that you don't know about you. It is... The worst thing you can do to yourself is to chase somebody that has no but you're interest not chasing. in you. He's chasing. If ever well, you know, he's he's giving himself no, just enough I mean, time to let the pain continue to live. Why? Uh, well, I mean that's something he has to deal with. If, Why leave if it's that too alone? Much pain, yeah, I'd say don't do it. Don't do it. Why would you want somebody that's running away from you? But you know, you? if if you really love her, you want what's best for her. And who are you to decide what's best for her? I, if, if she doesn't want to be with you, then she'll be happier somewhere else. Gallo, All you can do is wish her the best. Let her go. Stop talk to her. All right? The easiest way. I was in love with a girl, and she, okay, that's the same. And what happened? She broke my heart. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wish I could say the same. Nobody broke your heart? You are one tough woman. I've been in places where I've been disappointed, but I can't say, oh gosh, they broke my heart. Really and truly, no. I've been disappointed, I've been let down, I've been in relationships where I thought, gosh, I was in love. But when I sit now and I look, I don't think I was. Wow. It was nice while it lasted, but it wasn't anything that I'd say, oh my goodness, if I can have him back today, I would. None at all. But maybe he's out there. I'm sure. The one that will. No. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. All right. I have, when I read the matters, they have to be believable. Somebody made one up? I think so. Well, let's hear one that's made up. No. Just for entertainment value. No. You know why? Because I think Morning Matters is a serious place where people come with their serious issues. We don't have time for, for, okay. for fictional matters. Well, I, the, you know, I don't know that you want to screen them, but if it's... That one was obviously, obviously made up. Okay. Obviously. Okay. I've been reading matters long enough to see one that is obviously made up. I'm not saying that some of them that are made up, I don't, they don't slip through my hand. But if it's obvious, I will not read it. Okay. This one says, what advice would you give a woman whose spouse is always critical and negative and never praises her? He never buys her gifts on any occasion and never tells her that she is beautiful. She says, some says it's verbal abuse. What do you think? I don't know that it's verbal abuse. It might be emotional abuse. But, um, I, you know, I guess if, if um, that's up to her to... Accept or not accept? I think, first, if it is something that has gone on for a long time, you have trained him to treat you this way, as unfortunate as that song, because you have accepted... But this is a third party making this statement. Or it or might be the woman oh, sending it and it talking be, in the yeah. third person. Oh, okay. I right? So... And she's dragging her husband in front of the TV. Now listen to this, listen to this. As she should. <laughs> but... If you've lived with this man for extended period of time, and this has been his behavior from the beginning, you have some responsibility in it. You've ta you have to take some responsibility for where you are because you have said to him without saying to him, it's okay to treat me like this. It's okay to speak to me like this. It's okay the way you get on in this relationship. If now you are ready to verbalize to him, look, this I am unhappy with, then you say to him, this is what I have ac accepted for the past five years, ten years, or whatever amount of years. I would like for it to change. And when you ask for it to change, you have to give him specific 
instances in how he can change. Why? Because he's, a, he's already on his routine. He's accustomed to behaving this way. He's not accustomed to being affectionate and nice and, and complimentary. And that's true. He might have grew up in a household that they didn't say nice things to each other. Right? So you need to stop him now and you need to hold him by the hand, not literally, but figurative, figuratively, and show him how to treat you well. And hopefully he loves you enough that he will reciprocate that, that, that behavior. Right? You treat him nice, you want him to treat you nice. You say nice things, you want him to say nice things to you. You want to be complimented. And these are the things that you have to ask from him if he's not given them. I think that this can be fixed. I think that this is something that you both can work on, but you both have to actively work on it. You have to take the lead because you have been sitting back taking too much for too long. So you have to take the lead. Every day you have to say to him, look, babe, um, you know, at least once a day, you have to say something nice to me and say something not sarcastically nice to me, but genuinely nice to me. And if he practiced that long enough, it will start to come naturally. Babe, at least once a month, you have to take me out to dinner. Oh, because this is how we are working on this relationship and after a while it will come natural he will feel that he wants to do it without you prodding him but for now you have to prod him well said you know and you can't when he does it you can't push it in his face and says well i know you really don't want to be here but you're the hair anyway say thank you treat it as it as if it was genuine Ugh. i've been there before i had a boyfriend like that one time the one that broke your heart? My heart was never really broken. I, I, I would like to tell you a story, and I know I tell you the truest stories on Morning Matters. I would like to tell you a story where my heart was torn out and every time I think of this boy for months I was crying. Never. Yes, I've been in relationships where I have cried for months or where I've cried for weeks or where I thought this would never and how can this happen? But once the crying stopped, it was done. And I figure everybody cries. Every, even when you leave a relationship that you choose to leave, you are saddened by it. Right? So that is natural. But to say my heart was torn out and oh my gosh, I was so smitten and so deeply in love with him. At those times, I might have thought so. But when I look back now, I say no, I was not. It just happened. But the next person I fall in love with, I will really fall in love with because I have grown, I see things differently. I have my little chart charted out. You know yourself a little better. A lot better. So now I, am, I know what I am expecting. I know what I am supposed to get into and what I'm not supposed to get into. Before, when you are at certain places in your life, people choose you, you don't choose them. Circumstances and situation choose you. You can't allow for that to happen for your whole life. You have to take control by God's grace and choose. A lot of times people fall into a situation, well, he may look good, he may sit down over there and he may drive on Lexus. That's not how you choose them. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> you know? So... Usually those are the hardest ones to get along with. Thank you. All right? Not that I know. That's why I don't drive a Lexus. Drive two feet? I gave it to my son. <laughs> Oh gosh. Rhonda, I met this guy and I really love him. He has a girlfriend that treats him bad. So he is looking for some love from someone that's going to love him. Not treating him so bad. So what should I do? I really love him. The best thing you can do is say, if that's what you're looking for, you need to end your relationship with the girl that treats you bad before you can get involved with somebody else and go from there and keep in mind you may not be the only girl he's telling that story to couldn't agree with you more i mean he is not making himself available to be loved by anybody genuinely he is he like it my mother would have said he liked the joke if his girlfriend treat him so bad he'd have left her a long time thank you obviously he doesn't have trouble meeting and getting girlfriends he wants pity he, maybe this is a story he makes up so he gets other girls on the side and they, oh, you poor thing, you are such a victim, you know, oh gosh, guess what, stop it, all right? Start feeling sorry for yourself. You know why you should feel sorry for yourself? Because you're allowing your emotions and time and to be invested and wasted in a man that really doesn't deserve it. If, if there is anybody you need to feel sorry for, it is you. Stop wasting time with this boy, you know, 
lots of guys go out there, oh, well, you know, I'm married, my, my wife is such a horrible woman, and but I can't divorce her because if I divorce her, I'm going to lose half. I said, boy, if you don't divorce, divorce her, you will lose all. Yeah. <laughs> so you decide so, well, which is more important. You know, <laughs> and, and that's fine that they don't want to lose half and stay there, but you don't have to be involved with it and put up with it and share just because he doesn't want to lose half. That's his business? That's his business. Say fine. Good luck to you and move on. Keep your half and your half a misery too. And ladies and gentlemen, don't allow yourself to get close to anything that you can see this, the warning signs on. A married man or a married woman, they come with big warnings on them. How can you ignore these signs? All right? Yeah, once or twice, they may get away with it, but eventually it should come out. No, man. No. Leave them alone, but Morning Matters has to wind down, Joe. Don't say so soon. All right? It's good, it might rain. It, it can't tell what's going to happen. Well, guys, it's good to be back. I tell you, Morning Matters is normal again, back in full swing until we decide to go somewhere else again. It's going to be from somewhere in the country, I believe. Until next time, I encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Rhonda Crane along and with Drew. Saying goodbye. Bye bye.